Hello, Margaret. Three o'clock in the morning, you've woken up. It's day 76 and Margaret wakes up very early in the morning. Her sleeping pattern has gone completely out the window since she learned of Leslie's death. The inside of Beatrice is also starting to look truly insane. And so begins Margaret's journey to Louisville, which is quite a long one because of the blocked roads around Moldraw. She leaves in the dark and the roads are eerily quiet. We don't rejoin Margaret until it's light outside, where she needs to do some quick lumberjacking to clear a path around this truck. She also finds a sad note in the glove box of the ruined car nearby. Hmm, there's a note in this car. I'm coming, Susan. I've got the car. We're going to make it. I don't know what the hell is going on out here. Just got to get to Louisville. There's a checkpoint there. They said on the TV. I'm coming, Susan. What did you bring on you, with you on your trip? A single screwdriver. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Susan would have been thrilled to see you. The road is long. Margaret loses concentration for a moment. And, well... Oh, another crash. Not the best place to crash. Sorry, Beatrice. We're definitely going to have to do some repairs to her before... Uh, yep, no worries. You got a little bit scared there, Margaret. I would also have a quick emergency cigarette. Everything's okay. She cruises through town and then turns on the road to Louisville. There is another problem up ahead, of course, because the world of Zomboid is just full of problems. Ah, yes. One of the police cars has a key and some gas, so she uses it to check whether the railway bridge is clear. It is. That's a much easier route, so she takes Beatrice across. She checks to see if Beatrice needs any repairs after the past couple of days of crashing into trees and squishing zombies, but everything is still in tip-top condition, surprisingly. Beatrice, you're so strong. To avoid further congestion on the way to Louisville, Margaret heads down the railway, hoping that it's clear of debris. As she gets closer to the city, the number of zombies begins to grow. Is there really any hope of survivors here? It's a good idea to stick closer to the river away from the main road, so she takes this dirt path. She drives through a rural suburb of Louisville, then further along until she finds a junkyard. The Stump family does have an affinity with junkyards. She stops for the night, checking a few nearby buildings and clearing up any stragglers nearby. <laughs> Little note here in the scrap office. My old man always said that scrappy metal was like a box of chocolates. You never know what kind of shit box you're going to get next. Not sure that makes much sense. Not actually even anywhere near Louisville yet. We have a little more ways to go. Let's get yourself some little carrots. We need to get you nice and healthy for your invasion of Louisville, Margaret. That carrot looks like a banana. She does a little exercise before bed to prepare the body for Louisville, then falls asleep. On the morning of day 77, she spies a fishing bait shop. Margaret does love fishing, so she hops out, takes out the nearby zombies, but is ultimately disappointed when there is absolutely zilch in the shop. She also realises she's gone the wrong way, and in this tricky predicament, she just about manages to get Beatrice turned the right way. The zombies squelch and scrape against the side of the bus. Eventually, she does make it to the main road, but there is more ruined traffic ahead. The military checkpoint is just beyond the row of burned out vehicles. She has to get out to clear the path. The entire military have been zombified and Margaret collects their dog tags out of respect. She'll make some sort of shrine or cover them in bucks or something. Mmm, some lovely beef jerky, fresh from a corpse. Yes, she will eat it. Just up the road, she spies something interesting. Very interesting indeed. Should be able to... Oh my god, oh. Look at the size of that bus. Oh, it's enormous. It's twice the size. Oh, I'm telling you guys, look at that bus. Imagine. Imagine all the room for activities in there. After killing a few more zombies, she hotwires this truck, which has gas, and uses it to begin moving the wrecks out of the way. It has been a long day and she's tired from all the skulls smashing, so she gets back into Beatrice and goes to bed. Her work will continue tomorrow. She wakes up early again, so she does some more exercise before she heads out. Margaret doesn't really want to go outside when it's so dark. She's warm and safe inside Beatrice. Once it's light, she jumps back in the truck and continues moving Rex. She also checks out this rather large, rather handsome bus. Oh, beef jerky. Don't mind if I do. I love dead person beef jerky. Mmm. Oh, ho, ho, baby. He's twice as big as Beatrice. Hello there. The bigger bus is in terrible condition, but it could be a fun project for the future. Inside of the bus, she finds a little friend. What the? Who are you? It's ambiguous amphibian. She clears the path of Rex and then uses the truck to scout ahead. It's relatively clear in terms of the road, but there are many, many zombies. Margaret does something typically foolish. She drives the truck into the checkpoint and then toots 
the glorious honker. Chaos ensues. And relax. Margaret is pretty tired after all of that, so she rests on the sofa in Beatrice. After a little shut-eye, she drives the bus up the road, but yes, a few more zombies have arrived. Just a couple. In another moment of madness, she decides to use the shotgun. Oh, Lord Margaret, what are you doing? The zombies swarm in from all angles, and Margaret, being Margaret Stump, has hardly brought in any ammo at all. It's time for more evasive procedures. Oh shit. We might have bitten off more than we can chew here. Okie kokey. Into the woods we go. She sprints into the woods and manages to lose them. We just sneak around them. Well, that was fun. Safely back at the bus. Wow. You know what that calls for? Goddamn bottle of cold red wine. She's ridiculously tired though, so let's get some sleep. Good night, Margaret, you mean killer. Oh, another gunshot in the distance woke her up. wonder if that's Paul. We're coming, Paul. I don't know what use I am. Well, I just killed quite a few zombies and I survived this long, but maybe I can help you somehow. All right then. Should we leave all that chaos behind us and see what lies ahead instead? I think that seems like a good idea. Come on, Beatrice. Good girl. Let's go. On they go, deeper into Louisville. There are more zombies ahead, so she takes them out nice and clean. After clearing out a couple dozen more zombies, she goes back to the bus to have a snack and rest for a moment. Then it's back out again to loot the military tents. She finds a fancy new gas mask and a new backpack, but not much else. She's already wearing 40 items of clothing. She doesn't need any more. In one of the tents, however, she does find something pretty interesting. A groundbreaking note. There's a note here in this tent. Paul Dursowitz, Leslie Stump, Rebecca O'Neill, Frank Booth, Samuel Taylor and Susan Reed. Leslie was here with Paul. I mean, Leslie's still alive? No, must have been in the past. But that does give us an idea. Maybe Paul is here and maybe he is alive. Let's keep investigating. The note is a good omen. Paul and Leslie were here once. Maybe Paul is still here somewhere in this ruined city of Louisville. She searches a little longer, but she's sore from all the exercise she's been forced to do by the great egg in the sky. So she returns to Beatrice to rest for the evening. On the foggy morning of day 80, she makes the decision to push on. She could loot these tents for the next week, but she decides there are more important rewards along the road. Friends, other survivors, or at least a bit of closure. She pushes on through the ruined camp on the outskirts of the checkpoint and then towards the river. There's a bridge here which has a gas station on the other side. She refuels the bus. Then she explores a little further, but it's a barren wasteland on this side of the river. Keen to not get distracted from her goal, she turns and crosses the bridge again, then finds a mansion with a tennis court that will provide a little temporary respite. She just needs to clear the lawn of monsters first. The house itself is relatively peaceful and she uses some water to create a delectable beer and bread soup in the back of Beatrice. She does a crossword before bed, all dead words like television and radio, then falls asleep. On the morning of day 81, she's up very early to fill her cooking pot with water from the toilet upstairs. She's going to make a delicious soup with it, just bloody scrumptious. Margaret needs to get a bit of meat on her bones before waging war against the dead city. Fill the pot with delicious toilet water for a morning soup this time with a bunch of beans in. I think we'll do some fishing today as well. She wants to go fishing out the back along the river, but she just needs to clear out the area so she doesn't get munched on. While clearing out the neighbouring mansion, she stops to wash her clothes as they're covered in gore. Then at last, after killing a few more dozen zombies, she feels safe enough to go fishing. She fishes for the entire day. In the early evening, a fierce summer storm rolls in, battering the trees with wind and rain. She seeks cover in Beatrice. 
Margaret slices up a fish, then stands in the middle of the bus listening to the thunder outside. The sky roars. Absent-mindedly, she begins shifting through her utility belt. Here's what she has in her belt. Oh, Margaret, you are quite special. This is her utility belt. She's got some antibiotics, lemongrass, painkillers, some flowers, some sellotapes, some six screws, and a hat. Margaret, you are crazy. She just sits in the front of the bus and listens to the rain and thunder, thinks of what's next. Will she find any survivors? It seems less and less likely. She is probably all alone. Day 82 begins with us force feeding Margaret an entire block of butter, then it's out to investigate the nearby buildings. Margaret is considering settling down in Louisville after all, as the mansions along the river seem like a good place to venture further into the city from. She uses the map to pinpoint some potential targets where there might be life in the city, but they are far from where she is. It will be a battle to clear the path. She goes mansion to mansion, slowly pushing Beatrice up the road. The weather is awful. She has to take frequent breaks as swinging the crowbar exhausts her quickly. Oh, okay. Steered and in a puddle. Margaret clears more buildings, kills more zombies, and then returns to the bus at the end of a slow day. Get yourself one bottle of wine, Margaret. You really need to consider what your plan here is, girl. At the moment, you're just sort of stumbling blindly into Louisville. Let's get some more rest. It's a cold and wet morning on day 83. There's even a wind chill, the first signs of an approaching winter. She goes into different mansions and then stands in the garden and imagines her future life. A fishing dock, a farm, a place to collect all her hats and other trinkets. Up the road is an even nicer one with a triple garage. The last mansion on the road turns out to be a survivor house and she stores the weapons she finds on Beatrice's roof rack. She kills more zombies and once again gets tired after the day's work of clearing just two or three mansions. It's going to be a long, long journey. She's drowsy, she's moderately, moderately exhausted. Just time to go back to the bus. Mansion by mansion, building by building, we will claim Louisville. Or at least find some evidence of our friends. Good night, Margaret. Day 84 is much the same. She explores, kills zombies, clears buildings, and generally gets a feel for Louisville. It's a very slow day and she gets tired around 2pm because she slept so poorly the night before. She reads, does exercise, and then simply stands in the back of Beatrice and stares into the void. Spends the rest of the day just sat back of Beatrice contemplating her immense loneliness. And then she goes to bed. On day 85, Margaret meets a citizen of Louisville. Who put you there? What do you want from me? Who are you? Hello? Anyone in here? Who put this gnome here? What do you want from me, Mr. Gnome? Who are you? Like some kind of guardian. She kills more zombies and then finds a working truck, which she uses to explore the road ahead. There are quite a few zombies in her path. Oh my goodness. Gas station here. She does, however, find a gas station. This will be important, as Margaret is currently down to just 20 cigarettes in her pouch. She returns to Beatrice and cooks a fish in the oven. It is delicious. Margaret needs more fish, and this mansion has a lovely little fishing boathouse out the back. It's perfect, so she casts her rod and fills her bag with some more fresh fish. It's the perfect house, and as she eats another fish in the back of the bus, she thinks about what her life might be like if she decided to settle down here for a while. She falls asleep, dreaming about her life in the house. On day 86, she wakes up far too early again, so we force her to do so much exercise that she starts to feel immense discomfort. Then it's back to the fishing house at half past four for more fish, which she does until she runs out of bait, so she spends most of the day scurrying around in the dirt, looking for insects to feed to the fish. Hmm, the David again. Hello, David. Don't mind me, I'm just searching for bugs in your garden, mister. I love the idea that she's meant to be looking for survivors and instead she's scouring the woods for bugs. She sits by the pool and smokes a cigarette, pretending she's in Cancun. After her bug hunt, it's back to the bus and she finds a pair of wet socks in her backpack, so naturally she puts them on her bed. Full of fish, she honks Beatrice's glorious honker to draw some zombies out of the woods. She kills some zombies, quite a few turn up in the end, and then retreats to the bus to eat this absolutely enormous fish with her bare hands. Margaret is sore all over from the exercise, so she really shouldn't have gotten out of the bus to fight. As soon as she can, she retreats inside again. Though she is certain that when she next steps foot outside Beatrice, the undead will have swarmed around her. She is tired and fatigued, so she spends the rest of the day reading. Tomorrow we kill zombies. 
Yeah. As expected, they are swarming the bus. Summon the zombies. Margaret strips the clothes from the zombies. She'll need them later for tailoring, and she doesn't want them to rot. She spends the rest of the day tooting the horn and killing the zombies that swarm. If she is to live here, she wants them all gone, zombie by zombie. Margaret will retake Louisville, a little corner of peace in the dead city. Wow. Absolute slaughter, Margaret. Absolute slaughter. <laughs> Killing zombies and eating sandwiches. Common mallow sandwich. Mmm. Delicious mallow sandwich. All right, then. And we shall read. For the rest of the evening, get our foraging up so we can find bugs more easily, my darling Margaret. And let's go until, let's say, 8 p.m. And then tomorrow we just continue on slaughtering all of the zombies in Louisville. Let's go half past eight. Good night, Margaret. Margaret dreams of the crowbar firm in her hands and prepares herself for another day of slaughter and exploration. <laughs>